Uh, let me pray for us, okay? God, once again, God, we are a uh, just a stiff-necked people, God. We need to be softened, God, by your grace and your kindness, your love for us, God, and grieve our sin and and uh, just follow you, God. Uh, so we pray for your word, God. We pray just the Spirit of God would take the word, God, and transform the heart. God, would it convict us of our sins and show us Christ, God, uh, our Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, as a reminder, we have the um, translation QR code over there. So if you need translation on your phone in a few different languages, we have that. Um, so this is our 15-minute uh, adult Bible study. Uh, and then we have a break uh, just for some newcomers. And then we get some coffee. And then we get started again at 1145. So uh, we've been going through the book of Galatians. And uh, we're, we're, we're getting here now to kind of like the last last. 20% of the book, and um, this is really the start of the, the apex of the book of Galatians. This is, this is the main point now, okay? Everything that we've read about the Judaizers and about the law and about sin and about self-centeredness and about arrogance and, you know, ethnic privilege, right? That is all now coming to a head. Um, and this is really like the, the apex. And uh, for the next one and a half chapters, Paul kind of lands the plane here, okay? And so last week, just as a quick recap, uh, Paul was really talking about two different types of Christian lives. And, and really, the second one is really not a Christian life. But the first one is freedom. Freedom in Christ, right, which is empowered by the Holy Spirit. And that empowering of the Holy Spirit, the purpose of that is what? To fulfill the greatest commandment, to love God and to love one another. So the Holy Spirit is not coming upon you and the gift that Jesus gives to us, the helper, the Holy Spirit, is not just for some radical light show, right? It's... He is the helper who helps us love, to obey God's greatest command, to love God and to love one another. So I said last week, if someone claims to be, be very spirit-filled and is not a very loving person, it's like, ah, you know, I don't know about that, right? Okay? So that's, that's what the freedom, that's what freedom is, freedom in Christ, a life in the Holy Spirit. And then... The other life that Paul was critiquing, criticizing, right, was the life of slavery, slaved, enslaved to the flesh, enslaved to yourself, right, myself. Like my biggest problem is that my biggest sin problem is that I can't stop thinking about myself. 99.9% .9 of the day, just can't stop thinking about myself, right? All these desires, right? So, so Galatians 16 as we finish uh, chapter five, this is probably the most, um, this is probably the part of Galatians that most of you have uh, heard. These are popular verses, uh, you know, the fruit of the spirit, right? And so we're gonna really dig into this. And I think it's gonna be a, a multi-part or multi-section about the spirit-filled life. And Paul really, he's got, there's a lot there for us to understand. Well, what does that mean? What does it mean to be spirit-filled, right? What is that? And, and, like, what does it look like, right? Because keep in mind, this is like the, the, the churches in Galatia. They, they're, they're a young church. They're, uh, they're a young set of church plants. They're young Christians. So sometimes I think we can be jargony, right? Like, hey, be filled, like, walk by the Spirit. Okay, like, what does that mean exactly, right? So, so we're going to try to, we're going to try to pull some threads there and see if Paul and God has something there for us, okay? 
But I say, walk by the Spirit. Right? Walk by the Spirit. Okay. Don't really know what that means yet, right? <laughs> it's kind of mysterious a little bit. Okay, yeah, like walk, walk by the Spirit, right? And so here's our first clue. Okay. And you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Okay. So interesting. He doesn't really define what it means to walk by the Spirit, but he gives us a clue of what it looks like when you are walking by the Spirit. When you're walking by the Spirit, the Spirit of God empowers you to resist the desires of the flesh. Interesting, okay? So, um, there was uh, a, 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 a sermon I preached, uh, it was at the outdoor service, when I talked about, uh, and we've talked about it before, by the way, the satanic creed, right, that was written in the 1960s, and the opening sentence of the satanic creed says, that we would be thine own God. Satan has no interest in you worshiping him. He is lying and tempting to us to worship ourselves. So when it says, when you walk by the Spirit, one byproduct of that is that you will not gratify, you will, not, you will be able to resist the desires of the flesh. And what is the desire of the flesh? It's me. Me, 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 me. Right? So the, walking by the Spirit helps me resist me. <laughs> Thinking about myself all day long. And the Spirit of God helps me, right? Helps us to be what? Others-centered not self-centered, God-centered, other-centered, right? Okay, but we still don't really know what it means exactly, right, to walk by the Spirit. So let's keep going, okay? For, or because, right, the desires of the flesh, desires, right, he used that in the last verse, the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit. And the desires of the Spirit are against, against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other. Okay, let's pause there for a second. So Paul is, this is really interesting, okay? Um, I know we talk about it a lot at church, but like if you're a new Christian and you're reading this, you're like, oh my gosh, there are, there is a war of desires happening here. Did you know that? Did you know that there is a war of desires happening? If you're a Christian, there is a war of desire happening in your heart right now. Every day, the moment you wake up, maybe even in your dreams, there's a, there's a every moment of every single day, there is a war for your desires. So the flesh is on one side and the spirit of God, right, is on the other side. And their desires, what does it say? They're opposed to each other. They're not the same, right? So the Spirit of God, right, the desires of the Spirit of God are trying to oppose your flesh. And likewise, the other way, right? And here it is. To keep you from doing the things you want to do, okay? So... Here, here's, I, I mean, this is really hard to go through in like a couple of minutes, but this is a really important question, right? Like, what do you want? So yesterday, um, uh, we had a watermelon at home, and uh, yeah, I have a little reputation for not being the most helpful guy at home, right, sometimes, to my wife. So I'm like, hey, you know, like, like and and. I could tell my wife, Tammy, was like, you know, it's like, it's a big watermelon, right? And she's like this tiny little lady, right? And like, you know, she's like having a hard time, like, you know, putting it in. And then I'm like seeing it out of the corner of my eye, right? I was like, you know, like, I should probably help her, you know? And then, uh, 
But I sort of paused, and right in that moment, there was a war, right? I don't know if you know that. I don't know if you know in that moment there's a war. There's a war of desire, right? And the question is, on one hand, my flesh is like, man, just, just hang out, right? Like, she looks like she's doing a good job, right? That's the desire of the flesh. And then the spirit of God is like searing my conscience, right? He's like, you know, he's like, and the thing is, here's the question, okay? So on one hand, I want to chill and hang out. On the other hand, I do actually want to help my wife. I want to serve. I want to love and carry that huge watermelon and cut it up. And here's the real question. Which is your true desire? Is your true desire, like, like, the, like Daniel, like the real Daniel, what does the real Daniel want to do? Does the real Daniel want to sit or Robert want to sit there? Or does the real Robert want to serve and love? And I don't want to make it sound so sacrificial. I mean, it's just a watermelon, right? But, you know, like, what is the real, who's the real Robert? And if you're in Christ, the real you wants to follow the Spirit. That is your true desire. So you want to pray. You don't have to pray. You want to pray. That is the gift of God because it says the desires of the Spirit are the things that you want to do. That's what it says because the flesh is trying to keep you from the things you want to do. That is the amazing, that is the ultimate, one of the aspects, the ultimate gift of being a child of God. He gives you a new heart. He gives you his spirit. And you want to do all these things. You want to pray. You want to get on your knees. When, when someone stabs you at the back, in, your, in the back at work, you want to love them. You want to forgive them, right? And, but you got to know who's, who's talking. You got to know how, how you got to put up a fight. And you got to understand that there's a war waging. For these are opposed to each other every moment of every day. And, and I'm just going to be honest. Like, most of the day, I don't even, you know, I'm not very aware of that. You know? So Paul is trying to equip, he's trying to help us understand what it means to walk by the Spirit. Okay? That's, that's the point here. Walking by the Spirit, we need the help of God to have this wisdom of the battle space. But if you are led by the Spirit, okay, it's a different verb, right? Walk by the Spirit, led by the Spirit, you are not under the law, okay? And this is, this is I'll stop here, but this is, this is great news, right? Because um, what, what Paul's saying is, because if you are led by the Spirit, right, your flesh is not your master, okay? You have a new master, and your new master is Jesus Christ, right? So, I mean, you know, and, and I fall into this too, right? If, if you have like an addictive personality or if you have habitual sin and you're like, yeah, I just can't stop. Like you say that word literally, I can't stop. Actually, you can stop. <laughs> That's what this says, you know? Don't speak that into existence, right? You, you can stop. It's not that you can stop. It's that the Spirit of God is your helper, and he wants to help you stop. So your flesh is not your master anymore. You have a new master, and it's King Jesus, and he's wonderful, right? He's a wonderful God. All right, let's pray. God, thank you for... Uh, just your words, God, and, and, and how your words, God, point us to you, to you, King Jesus, God. And we're just, we're just so full of struggle and, and sin, God, and you know us, God. And, and we're, just, we're struggling just every day, God. So I pray, God, as, as we continue our service, as we have a break and fellowship and go into praise and worship, God, would you... Stir in us, God, just uh, a desire and a, and a passion.
compassion, God, to know there is victory, God. We, don't, we are not enslaved to our former master, God. You are our new master, and you long to transform us and, and just give us freedom and, and the freedom to love, God, especially, to love you and to love one another. God, thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.